This story is straight from my father's mouth. His mother was a singer in Vegas, and she was probably one of the best. I never knew much about his childhood. He gave us the best growing up, and never asked for anything in return. We never asked questions because, well, when you grow up well, what's the point, you know? So dad's childhood was a mystery to me, up until yesterday. Dad found out that he has a brain tumour a few months ago. It's inoperable. We'd been drinking together, sitting by the bonfire, while my own children ran through the darkness of our yard, playing and laughing. I don't know why he told me all of this. Maybe he didn't want to die with a secret. Still, I have entire faith that the following is true. This is the story from his point of view. My mom had always been beautiful. From the first memory, I just remember thinking how absolutely wonderful she always looked. Eyebrows always perfectly plucked, skin as smooth as a child's, lipstick bright red and never smeared no matter what happened. Of course beauty doesn't make you a good parent. Love makes you a good parent. And I don't think she ever had love for anyone outside of herself. In all honesty, my sister Tara and I weren't her birth children. Her own sister had given birth to twins at an extremely young age. She died not long after childbirth due to malpractice. Mom had no choice but to take us under her wing. She didn't necessarily want to. However, she knew she could sue the hospital for malpractice against her beloved sister and win much easier if she took us in. Made it look like she needed the money, which I guess she did. She won, of course. After that, Mom had a stroke of bad luck that followed her wherever she went for the first few years of my life. Jobs were hard to come by, and something told me that she knew she was getting older fast. She knew she was aging, and she hated it. It seemed like the more desperate she became, the worse things got. Then suddenly, when I was about nine, everything got better. Mom was happy. She looked more beautiful than ever. We suddenly had this house that was incredible. Three stories with a grand staircase and more rooms than we'd ever need. Mom had a permanent job at a very popular casino, singing on stage at their bar. Now, that might not be a huge thing now, but at the time, it was like being a real star. There were parties, lots of parties. The most glamorous people of that time, in that place, came to our home. Of course, while it sounds like our childhood was grand, it really wasn't. There were things going on behind the scenes that no one could ever fathom. Mom never showed any kind of affection towards us that wasn't to make sure everyone thought she was the perfect parent. When she looked at us, there was no love in her eyes, no hate, no sadness, just blankness. We were there, and the only time she ever really paid us any attention was when we were in the way. We weren't allowed outside of our rooms more than to take meals, bathe, or play outside. We had a nanny who homeschooled us. Hell, I never set foot in a real school into my late teenage years. There were rooms we weren't allowed in at all. Then, there was the attic. We were never allowed anywhere near there. And even now, I think she had a good reason for keeping us away. It started about a year after we moved into the house. Laughter. <laughs> Dark, evil laughter like nothing I'd ever heard before. It would start in the middle of the night and go until near daybreak. It wasn't loud, but it always seemed like it was right in your ears. Bringing this up to mom was useless. Nanny heard it too, but she seemed to take mother's side. I guess I got that. Don't go against the one who pays you. It was torturous at times. Nearly impossible to tune out. But you learn with time. Then something came down from there. 
only at night, only when mom was sleeping. The first time I saw anything, I was probably 10 or 11. I got up in the middle of the night to go use the restroom, which was just across the hall. However, at the end of that very same hallway, there was the attic door. Every day, it stayed closed, locked. That night, it stood open, and something stood halfway in the door and half out into the light of the hallway. Despite that light, it was black. Black as darkness, black as death. White eyes adorned the face. Too large, too far apart. No other features, just those white, wide eyes. Seeing me, seeing nothing. The laughing that I'd come to know so well came from it, despite the fact that it had no mouth. It stayed there for a long time, before slipping back behind the door, which closed with a click. I told mom, I told nanny, I told Tara, I told the strangers at the parties. No one would listen. And so it went on, for longer than I'd like to say, that thing terrorized me. At night, it would walk around the house. Sometimes, it'd just stand in the open doorway and stare. Other nights, it'd stand right over my bed, staring at me with those awful eyes. It'd caress my face with disgusting, long fingers that smelled of curdled milk. That's something you never learn to live with and ignore. Around the time I turned 12, work started to dwindle for mom. Our bills were behind. Then, she found out that she was pregnant and lost the job entirely. She was a mess. I remember seeing her cry when I was little, but never after things started looking up. She cried all the time then. I remember overhearing her talking to Nanny about wanting an abortion. A few nights later, I saw her go up in the attic. I'd only ever seen her go once before, with a young woman from one of her parties. She came back down with a much lighter look on her face. The next day, she announced to us that she would go through with her pregnancy. The bills got paid, mom opted to stay indoors, nanny did everything for her. Hell, she even gave birth at home. A little girl. Just like that though, she was gone. Mom told all her friends about how she had adopted her baby out to an older couple up north. But I knew better. I watched her take the crying newborn up to the attic the night after she was born. I heard the cries, the screams, the silence. Then the laughter. <laughs> Mom got a new job at an even better casino, and just like that, everything seemed normal. She worked, the parties resumed, the laughing monster stayed in its place. I felt so selfish for it, but I was glad for what she did in a way. I could sleep again, I could eat again, I felt normal for the first time in years. And then, it came back and it was so much worse. It didn't just stand there, it spoke. Spoke with no mouth. It said awful things, things I'd never repeat to anyone. The eyes stared as the words slipped out, slurred from nowhere I could see. I wanted to die then. At 14 years old, I wanted it all to just end. With no one listening to me, and no one caring, I started acting out. It just started with running away in the middle of the night. I'd stay gone until 3 or 4 in the morning. At first, just going on walks. We didn't live too far from a lot of bars and diners and shops. Places where kids hung out. Those same kids got me into drinking and smoking, among other things. Meanwhile, things were going bad for mom again. They hired on a much younger singer, even with her luck, her age was showing. 
She seemed so desperately depressed all the time. The last night we lived in that house, I was sneaking out as I normally did. I peeked out of my door, but I wasn't met with a normal quiet. I heard crying coming from down the hall, from mum's room. It wasn't her voice crying though, it was Nanny's. Then I heard a thump and silence. I closed the door just enough so I could see out of the crack as mum dragged Nanny's unconscious body out of her room, down the hall, and to the attic door. She closed it behind her, and I listened to the thump, thump, thump of the unconscious woman being dragged up the stairs. I cried then. I knew exactly what was going to happen. This time though, there was no sound from the attic for a while until I heard mum's voice. She was yelling at someone, yelling in between tears. Frantic footsteps started down the attic stairs and into the hallway. I closed the door as quietly as I could and tiptoed to my bed. I pretended to be asleep as mum peeked in, only for a moment, before closing the door quietly behind her and running frantically back down the hallway. It was quiet for a while, but I didn't dare move. There was no laughter coming from the attic this time, and I remember wondering to myself if something had gone wrong. Then I smelled the smoke. The rest of that night went so fast. The entire hallway was filled with flames, the attic door was left wide open, and that thing stood in the doorway. Even with the bright light of the flames, it was still black and featureless. A horrid, inhuman scream came from somewhere inside the monster. It pointed at me as it screamed, but I started running before I could see whether or not it was actually making chase. I looked into mum's room, but she was gone. Her king-sized bed, along with the canopy above, was up in intense flames. I ran to Tara's room and woke her up. From there, we climbed down the best we could from the awning outside her bedroom window, as the stairs were on the other end of the hallway, where the flames were at their worst. Mom was arrested that night. Arson was the only charge. They assumed the three bodies in the attic perished in the fire. However, it was a different time. No one believed she could have been capable. After all, she was a woman. She was a beautiful woman. They assumed she was too dumb to start a fire. Can you imagine that? They let her go. But she died only a few months later. She just withered away. I don't even think the doctors today could explain it. Although, I'm sure they'd slap a label on it. But it would only be to hide their own incompetence. There just wasn't an explanation. When she killed that thing, its absence took her. Despite the fact that I know that thing is dead, I still wake up in the middle of the night expecting to see it standing over me. Those wide, white eyes staring, the laughing coming from nowhere. I asked my dad later whether or not he was afraid of dying. Oh no, I'm not afraid of dying. I'm afraid of what might be waiting for me on the other side.